There's the blood rock. Outside of spending 60 insight per each of them, there's uh, that is the only other way to get a blood rock in this game. Well, well, that's not true anymore on top of that because they also added it as now a random chance in some of the deeper chalice dungeons. I wonder if one of the Brador ringings I was hearing was just a respawn one from the floor up above this cave. Now, let's go take care of Brador. Speaking of, and then one more thing. You'll recall him asking us if we could hear the bell before. We can now. Brador's testimony. A nice uh, detail that I, I like that they add and to make it a little easier is that they kill these two enemies in the hallway once you've uh, advanced far enough. Because if having to deal with those two in this hallway and that invasion would be a pain in the ass. Now this is a really cool uh, Helmet? Hat? Whatever you want to call it. The scalp of a horrible cleric beast, indicating that Hunter Brador, a healing church assassin, had killed a compatriot. Afterward, he wore his ally's own scalp and hid himself away, deep below in the cell. The church provided him with a single, sandless bell of death to ensure their secrets would be kept. Look at this. It looked like a... Uh, popular depiction of a Wendigo. Not the mythological version, but the one from pop culture. Speaking of, it's 2021 and I still am waiting for Disney slash Fox to release antlers, please. Well, well, look who's here. Welcome to my quarters. I've never entertained a guest before. Are you going to kill me? After all you've done, kill me. As if to right your wrongs. What is it? Aren't you going to kill me? Or perhaps beg my forgiveness? Well, leave off. What's done is done. <laughs> What is it? Oh, I will. <laughs> Nothing changes. Such is the nature of man.
pull out later. The demented hunter weapon brandished by Brador, the healing church assassin. The blood letter assumes its true and terrifying form after it draws upon blood from the inner reaches of one's body and soul. This is the only effective means of expelling tainted blood, or so Brador, isolated in the cell, continued to believe. I don't have the blood titch to wield it, but it's the weapon that we've been seeing him invade us with. It's a small little club until he, or you, the player, um, sort of stab yourself with it and cover it in blood, doing some damage to yourself in the process, and turning into a giant bloody mace, quite literally, as the new head and the staff form a much larger weapon. Fire damage increase. And now we have that second blood rock. Let's put this up to ten. take care of the last thing I wish to do tonight. Okay, this was clearly not the good lamp to do this with. Yeah, I am much further away from my target. Oops. Let's go fix that. For whatever reason, I thought that was closer. That was a mistake. <laughs> yep, this is significantly shorter. Yeah. 
I like to try to cap these sessions off with bosses if possible. And now that we have Lawrence's skull, we can face his, uh, fiery spirit. This weapon is a beast fucking slayer. And don't forget it. Beast embrace. Now, I said previously, you don't fight the cleric beast in this uh, church. And I'm still correct. Des Lawrence, the first vicar. Maybe a retool version of that boss, but it is not the same. I had so much trouble the very first time I fought him. Welcome, what is... Very well, let me... Ooh, just a little short. Pop some of these good echoes, and I think I should be able to do that. Welcome, what is it? 
very well, let me... Man, the strength gains are still decent right now, so I'm gonna keep pumping that. Farewell, good hunt. May you f Now, let's look at that beast embrace rune. Beast embrace. After repeated experiments at controlling the scourge of beasts, the gentle embrace rune was discovered. When its implementation failed, the embrace became a forbidden rune, but this knowledge became a foundation of the healing church. To those who swear this oath take on a ghastly form and enjoy accentuated transformation effects, especially while wearing a beast weapon. Let's put that on. Now, we are... For all intents and purposes, a werewolf, scourge beast. We look somewhat um, like uh, an abhorrent beast, like uh, the suspicious beggar, or the one fought in Chow's dungeon. This uh, grants you various effects, much like how the milkweed helps with the arcane. This one, in particular, helps with the the beasthood stat. But put on the beast claw. These be attacks become a little stronger and we start growling when using them. Transform. These become significantly more savage. And on the L2 button now, we get a scream that is pretty much identical to the Beast Roar uh, Hunter tool. Mostly is used to stagger enemy players as well as uh, if you time it right, it can deflect bullets. And also, unlike the Hunter tool Beastly Roar, it does not cost uh, your own bullets in order to use anymore. So, outside of the little bit of stamina, it is ostensibly free. So with this build, you finally can become the beast you've been hunting. Turn that back off. So, uh, Lawrence, much like, uh, uh, Lady Maria, is, uh, a lot of, uh, shall we say, uh, nonsensical dream nightmare, uh, Paradoxes in that uh, he's um, in the real world. His skull is large and beastly, and sits on the altar in the Grand Cathedral. But uh, here, not only does he have his skull on, but a human version of his skull still exists, which is what uh, drives him crazy there and forces him to wake up off his altar. It uh, really lends itself well to the whole fact that, uh, as I've been saying with all these dream nightmare areas, and very particularly the Hunter's Nightmare of the DLC, is that there's, there's a lot of paradoxes that are not, uh, that actually make sense in the context of it being a nightmare, rather than it just not 
point making sense if you're trying to just put it into uh, terms of how you would in real life. Dreams don't always have to make sense. I mean, have you ever tried explaining a weird one you had to someone and then realizing very quickly how weird it sounds and how nonsense it sounds? Because that's just how they work. And that is, uh, and I think that is reflected really well in, uh, how, uh, Bloodborne handles it. And, you know, its own weird way, I appreciate it. For that reason. Well, that's all for tonight. I thank each and every one of you all for joining me, and, uh, I appreciate sticking with me for, through this playthrough. We are two sessions away from finishing this. The next session will be um, the final Chow's Dungeon with its uh, story content. And then after that, the finale of the game itself. And I, I have some uh, nice plans of how I'm going to be tackling that in particular. So, until next time, bye!